This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Salome Santiago Lim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and Family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and Family, Fancy May D. Imbong, Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul College of Davao, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, Pure Lina Water Supply Corporation, Phoenix Petroleum Fuels Philippines Incorporated by Dennis A. Uy, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Chardin, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Aviles, Quaylands Food House, Selvina Datoy and Family, Doctora Amelia Dizon and Family, Gus and Sophie, Mrs. Ampi Icasas and Family. Offering of the Holy Mass. Accept Most Holy Trinity. This sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, good morning. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration on the Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is a significant day in the Christian calendar, marking the beginning of Holy Week and leading up to Easter Sunday. It commemorates the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey while the crowd hailed him as the Messiah. This event is recorded in all four Gospels of the New Testament, and its significance is essential for understanding the work of Christ. The triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday was a significant event that fulfilled prophecy revealed Jesus' humility and foreshadowed his death and resurrection. As we commemorate this day, we should remember that Jesus came not to conquer by force, but to win hearts by love. He chose to die for us so that we could have eternal life. Let us celebrate Palm Sunday with joy and gratitude knowing that Jesus is our King and we are His people. Our Mass presider is Father Patrick Dominador Z. Falguera of the Society of Jesus, Chaplain of the Ateneo de Davao University Grade School Unit. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of His Passion and His Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that He entered His own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, we ask you to sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ, the King in exaltation, 
may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you'll find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it and we'll send it back here at once. And so they went off and found a colt tethered at the gate outside on the street and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. And so they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches so that they had cut, that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him as well as those following kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. My dear friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so, my dear friends, as we begin this Eucharistic salvation of the Palm Sunday, which heralds the Holy Week, we pray for the grace of peace within us, peace among our hearts peace in our communities, and peace in the world. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that he may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary 
a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from the buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like a flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All you 
descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Saint Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, Pilate used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested, a man called Barabbas, was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask Pilate to do for them as he was accustomed. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? But for he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. 
But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? Crucify him! Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in a purple and weaving a crown of thorns, and placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into a service a passerby, Simon a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place called Golgotha, which is translated, Place of the Skull. They gave him wine, drugged with mir, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by revealed him or reviled him, shaking their hands and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani which is translated my god my god why have you forsaken me some of the bystanders who heard it said look he is calling elijah one of them ran soaked a sponge with wine put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink saying wait let us see if elijah comes to take him down jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please all kneel.
the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how Jesus breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. March 1965, around the same time this year, almost 60 years ago, about 600 unarmed civilians peacefully marched across a bridge in Salma, Selma, Alabama. They were met with violence by police on the other side. This was one of the moments which marked the civil rights movement in the U.S. The peaceful marchers were not as fortunate, however, if compared to their Russian counterparts about 60 years earlier. Around 1904, Father Gapon, a Russian Orthodox priest, led a similar protest march. It was meant to deliver a petition to the Russian Char. Thousands of workers took part. They were not really trying to overthrow the government. They just wanted to be heard, as they believed that the char was not aware of their own situation. Instead of a dialogue, however, their fate ended in death, as they were shot down cruelly by Russian soldiers. Like the U.S. civil rights movement, this was one of the events which eventually sparked the Russian Revolution. Both these events in history, one in Alabama, the other in St. Petersburg, Russia, were later to be known as Bloody Sundays. But the more famous Bloody Sunday occurred in 1972. Also around this time of the year, about five decades ago, it was when 13 civilians were mercilessly gunned down by the British soldiers in Northern Ireland. This echoed the events of the first Bloody Sunday Massacre in Ireland in 1920 when the Irish Republican Army, also known as the IRA, assassinated British spies in the war for Russian independence. But it was the Derry Bloody Sunday of 1972 which gained popularity through the years. Maybe because it was the inspiration behind the song Bloody Sunday, sang by the world-famous Irish band U2. Bono, the U2 lead singer, later revealed how the band spoke of the desire to have the courage to take the path of peace instead of violence. This can be reflected in the lyrics of the song, which goes, But I won't heed the battle call. It puts my back against the wall. Perhaps this heed for a better path towards peace, peace finds its origin in what we celebrate today, Palm Sunday. In a way, Palm Sunday can actually be deemed as the first bloody Sunday, at least in terms of its liturgical implications. Blood depicted in red-colored vestments, blood which is shed, depicted in the readings we heard, blood which is offered in the consecration of wine later. Today's gospel reading, which depicts the Lord's passion and death, also show traces of a bloody Sunday. Blood streaming down Jesus' temples as he agonizes and dreads his impending suffering. Blood cloak robe which covered Jesus. The blood scarring Jesus' face as he is struck on the head repeatedly 
and crowned with thorns. Blood flowing down Jesus' back as he is scourged on the pillar by harpooned whips. Blood coming from the nails which pierced Jesus' wrists and feet. Blood coming from Jesus' side caused by a lance. Bloody Sunday not only speaks of Jesus' physical pain, but his emotional and spiritual distress as well, of being abandoned and betrayed by his closest friends, and his feeling of abandonment by his father as echoed in his dying words which we heard in, which we heard in the gospel earlier. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? But the bloody Sunday of suffering eventually becomes a bloody Sunday of triumph. For blood is not only a symbol of death, but more importantly, a symbol of life. For eventually, the blood shed on Good Friday leads to the blood rising on Easter Sunday. Interestingly, going back to the narrative of the Blood Sunday Massacre in Northern Ireland, immortalized by the song Bloody Sunday by the Irish band U2, a re-investigation of the case in the mid-90s found the British soldiers guilty of shooting unarmed civilians. This was contrary to the initial findings of the investigation taken in the aftermath of the 1972 Bloody Sunday Massacre, which whitewashed and condoned the violence conducted by the British soldiers against the Irish civilians. This led to a public admittance and humble apology by the UK government. This eventually led to what was known later as the Good Friday Accord Agreement, signed by Irish and British representatives, finally putting an end to the war which had brutally, which had brutally torn Ireland and England apart for so long a time. It was a historical event by the IRA, witnessed by the IRA soldiers fighting for independence and witnessed by British forces fighting for the defense of their motherland. And with all parties seemingly agreement that some, this was something they thought they would not witness in their lifetime, the possibility of peace. My dear friends, in the world wherein Bloody Sundays occur, in the war-torn land of Ukraine and Israel, and in even here in our beloved nation. The courage to take the path of peace seems a difficult path. But Bloody Sunday, Palm Sunday, reminds us that it can bear fruit. In fact, this was the very intention of the Irish band U2 all along, as sung in the lyrics. The real battle just began on Bloody Sunday to claim the victory Jesus won. And the victory claimed by Jesus on Easter Sunday seemed to be the big backdrop to the peace which has flourished in the United Kingdom since 1998. In fact, the Silver, the 25th Anniversary Peace Agreement, celebrated 2023 last year, was celebrated on Easter Sunday. Thus, my dear friends, on this Palm Sunday, we are reminded that the path to long-lasting peace is possible, even as it will eventually lead us to Easter Sunday. For the abandonment of our God on Good Friday, echoed by Palm Sunday, would eventually lead to the peace, the resurrection of Easter Sunday. And so, my dear friends, let us all rise, and we now proclaim the creed of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God. 
begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was murdered, and he rose again on the third day in accordance to his scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will come no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who in the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Full of trust in the Lord's compassionate love, let us present our petitions to Him. Who is able to understand the difficulties in this? And for each prayer, the intention of our response will be Merciful Father, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. That all believers may always welcome the Lord Jesus with open heart, like those who welcomed him to Jerusalem. We pray. Merciful Father, that the Holy Father, our Bishop, and our priests may continue to guide and encourage us with the holiness of their lives to be faithful to Jesus. We pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. That all the members of the judiciary in our country may render justice without delay, favoritism, or corruption. We pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. That the victims of legal injustices may continue their quest for justice with moral strength and be given their due. We pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. That we may realize that the suffering endured by Jesus was also caused by our sinfulness and lack of repentance. We pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. That all those who risk their lives for the gospel in various parts of the world may inflame the church with their courage and missionary enthusiasm. We pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. That the Ateneo de Davo grade school community may we know the love of Christ as we live in him and he lives in us all the days of our lives. We pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially those who have helped us in the Pauline apostolate, may they have eternal peace and joy in the Father's house. We pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. And for all other intentions you would like to pray for at this Eucharistic celebration, especially those silently unarticulated in our hearts. Through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord God, sustain us in our resolve to live as Jesus taught us. As we share in his sufferings, may we also come to share in his glory forever. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.
offerings of these are sacrifice of bread and of wine, they become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Let us pray. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is we right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust the condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels in joyful celebration, we too acclaim as we now proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, offered the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My dear friends, we now proclaim the mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her faithful spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life so that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
for through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. So as we continue to pray for peace within our hearts, peace in our communities, peace in our world, we now pray the Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but look on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who with a peaceful heart embraced the passion of the cross that he may be led to the resurrection. 
Happy are we who are now invited to partake of his supper. who cannot receive Holy Communion, we pray the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart, detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart I love you above all things because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Let us pray. Nourished with the sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for the sick. Lord and Father, God without end and almighty, through your grace, you gave us strength and help in our weakness. In your mercy, touch your sick people, deliver them from their sickness, and restore their good health, so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharistic celebration has been offered. 
Let us go forth and have peace in our hearts, in our communities, and our community families. And speak to God. We pray and thank the Lord for the following. The sponsoring group, Ateneo de Davao University Grade School, headed by Dr. Anne Rose Villarba, Grade School Headmaster, Dr. Cyrus Estera and San Pedro Cancer Support Society, Egay Ayag, Maria Jeanette Gan, Evelyn and Peter Gan. Thanksgiving intentions, Sir Jeneline Amaneo and family, Anne Rose Villarba and family, Senya Gonzaga and family, Ateneo de Davao University Grade School teachers, and for the birthday intentions of Jeanette Gunn. For good health of Jeric, Paul Gunn, Winkle and Monique Artes, Lourdes Apostol, Nelio and Emeline de la Peña, Ernesto and Erlinda Aguilar. For the recovery and healing of Lilia de la Armente, Maria and Reynaldo Tidoy, Peter Gunn, Trinidad Molina, Gina Sorenio, Merlin Memorial, and for the repose of the following souls, Romulo, Isabello, Itak Sr., Pinito Jr., Maximo, Lucia, Raimunda, Felipa, Ruben Sr., Luciana, Rodolfo, Lenny, Miguel, Abner, and all the victims of war natural and man-made calamities, and all the souls in purgatory, all the deceased benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Communication Ministry of Davao, may God grant you abundant blessings today and every day. <laughs>